guys welcome back to my channel um it's been a minute since i've done like a video like this but i just feel like maybe i need to do this disclaimer just so it's out there i am a creative person so that means that when i'm doing something i have to be good at that thing like the very first time i try it so i'm not that great at youtube which is why i'm never really on youtube because it's like a perfectionist trait and it's not the best but that's how my brain functions so because i'm not great at youtube i don't do youtube videos but i'm trying to be consistent which is why i'm back kind of sort of so yeah so yeah i just um today i want to talk about five ways to level up mentally kind of in correlation with the video i did before um i think it was like I don't know how many ways to level up in your 20s so i feel like this will probably just be like a part two and i'll just add it in the self-development um tab so i'm gonna be doing my skincare routine because yeah and obviously fixing up my wig but i just want to chit chat but another disclaimer is that you don't necessarily have to do all of these steps these are things that worked for me personally so you can try them and see if they work for you but i'm not saying that these um steps will work for you and this is like holy grail kind of thing it's just if you want to try it it's not a must so number one on my list is to acknowledge your problem and just be real with yourself so it's very hard sometimes when you're going through things to just acknowledge that i'm the cause of the problem or this person is the cause of the problem or this is what the problem is it's very hard to acknowledge it because sometimes when the problem is happening it may seem like it's everything else but the problem but the moment you realize that okay i have a problem or okay this problem is going on with me or this is what it is that's step one to figuring out how to solve it that's step one to figuring out if you need help or how to navigate things so you don't you know lose your mind and whatnot so step one is to acknowledge your problem or just come to terms with it like this is the this is it and I want to find help I don't want to find help but either way just know what it is number two is feel the problem and then detach so what I mean by that is surrounding problems there's a lot of um, different emotions most times negative emotions and what I've learned is that when you push those negative emotions away and you bottle them up, they tend to come out, but in like a more intense emotion. For me personally, there was, a, well, there used to be a time where um, I just bottled up a lot of things. So even if it's like sadness, depression, and all of that, I bottled all of those things up so when i did release it everything came out as anger so people thought i was angry all the time but really i wasn't angry it's because i had all of those emotions bottled up that when i did react i reacted on the one emotion i had access to which was anger because anger was like the first thing i go to and it seemed as if like i was crazy because um it would be something little that would tick me off and me to spiral out of control and at that point when when i did spiral i didn't have any control over my emotions or whatever i was doing but my anger wasn't like fury it was to where it was like silent anger so although i didn't really say much i was like brooding inside and i would brood for days like i remember one time i was angry for a month like in and i realized that that anger was like the, the doorway to depression because i've suffered from depression for like um almost 10 years of my life so that anger usually is used as a doorway for depression because when i'm angry and i go weeks and months i go into like sadness and then depression and then all of that so the best thing to do that i have learned is to feel the emotions and then learn to detach yourself from it so number three is ignore your emotions when you're dealing with facts i know it's gonna be like completely opposite from what i just talked about before but in every situation you have to know the truth and facts so facts as the reason why i like to separate facts from the truth is my truth could be different from what the facts are like for example if something happened on 
um maybe march 3rd how that's how that situation happened i could know the facts about that situation and that and those facts could be true but my truth would be what my experiences were and what i went through that day that's my story and that's my truth but my truth could be different from the facts so it's important to understand the facts and when you understand the facts you have to detach your emotions from the facts because the facts are cold hard it's like cold hard truth it's like black and white there's no um gray so your truth on the other hand um you could do whatever you want with that because that's how you felt in the moment that's how you're feeling now that's what you experienced and you can be emotional about that but you also have to know that if your truth is not correlating with the facts then there's some sort of like emotional trauma that's causing um the two to be like displaced and not correlating so definitely something that i would say that you that needs to be looked into but your truth remains your truth like i cannot change that for you you cannot change that for you because you genuinely believe that those were your experiences and i cannot take that from you nobody can take that from you so number four is notice the patterns and what i mean by that is notice the things so just notice the patterns the things that take you off why you get ticked off and how you deal with it so just notice um the patterns of things that set you off notice how you come out of the moods that you're in and you know how you handle your mental health generally because um once you start to take notes of the pattern you know how you are um, treating yourself if it's good or if it's bad or how to advance or how to be better so take notes of everything that you're doing whether it be mental notes or physical notes or um getting somebody to hold you accountable but it's important to know the patterns that you're going through so that you can know how to change it and what you need to so number five on my list is seek help obviously that you knew that was gonna come because you cannot do it all by yourself you need help some people say personally i have therapy and i have jesus so i've been going to therapy for a number of years and i've been able to work through my childhood traumas abandonment issues attachment styles um things that trigger me why i get triggered and how to not get triggered and all of those things i've been able to work through them even the ones that I haven't been able to work through i know that i have them and i can know when they're going to arise and cause me issues and cause me my relationships so therapy i believe is a good form it's a it's a good thing to seek out just to get to know more about yourself and how to how to kind of map out your like road of healing so again like i said if you're not a therapy person that's completely fine but another way you can um seek help for yourself healthy healthily huh, words is talking to people that you care about people that you know are not going to um and put your business out there somebody that you trust with your life talk to them and, and make sure that it's somebody that can give you good advice not just somebody that will, that will tell you something rubbish and and then um make you suffer i'm obviously i'm christian and so i thought that these things were just like a flesh and carnal i didn't know that they were like so i didn't know most of the things that i was going through was actually like spiritual but you know that's another video for another day but a good 95% of the things that we think are normal um, stems from something spiritual, you know. So I learned that my anxiety was obviously from a previous abandonment issue that I had when I was younger, which caused the spirit of anxiety to attach to me and caused me to not trust anything or anyone and it was also affecting my relationship with God which is why I was struggling a lot because I did not trust the creator with his creation and it was just not making sense the math wasn't math then at all so um once I once I started to get close to God I learned most of these things and why I was suffering the way I was suffering and it just made a lot of sense so if you are, so you know when all else fails, try Jesus. Actually, try Jesus first so that all else cannot fail. 
don't be like me try jesus first so all else cannot fail so obviously jesus um was the person that helped me better understand myself and better understand the situation i was in obviously i'm not a hundred percent fully like there mentally as to where i want to be but i'm a thousand million times better than the way i was before like i can actually handle my emotions way 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 better and i have episodes here and there now and again but i know how to easily get out of it because i know who i'm depending on and i know that you know as much as i think i have control of my life i'm not the one controlling this jesus is controlling this <laughs> okay guys so this is where i wrap up the video thank you so much for watching and for tuning in if you're not subscribed and you've made it to the end of the video and you would like to subscribe please do i will see you when i see you um hopefully it's not next year hopefully it's sometime soon and i can get out of this mindset where i need where i'm thinking that i need to be perfect at youtube and yeah <laughs> okay bye